Hey, I'm Daniel. <laughs> so I'm chewing on a fisherman's friend. <laughs> One second. Hey, I'm Daniel. And I'm Bobby. And together we're the, the decom team. team. I think All we're right. sticking with it. That's good. Let's that's the one we're taking yeah we review disney channel original movies from everyone's childhoods as well as some of the new disney channel original movies uh the never-ending catalog has to offer and since it's october happy halloween incredibly there are 111 disney channel original movies and today we are talking about i i can't believe this we are talking about the first ever Disney Channel original movie. Exactly. And it's pretty convenient that it's a Halloween movie, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think I feel like that's a I feel like that's a secret theme with decoms. I might have already said this actually. I think I think we said actually in the episode, but I, I'm you, I've gone off oh, script. Did, <laughs> and yes, it is the 1997 under film under wraps starring Bill Fogerbaki as the mummy. And also we'll just remind everyone that even though we're reviewing kids' movies, family movies, that we might swear a little bit. So just fewer discretion is advised. Okay, so since on yesterday's episode, we kind of went into a big intro about Halloween films. So today we won't do as long of an intro. So I think we'll just get right into it where Bobby is saying that uh, his hair looks good enough to, to record. Oh, God. <clears throat> That's why I wore a hat into. today. <laughs> where we're at let's get into it <laughs> well i i gotta fix i gotta fix my hair now that you have the beard you, you babies don't remind me of, of you as much now <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't imagine so no <laughs> so far every baby like that you've picked out so there's definitely been something there about me you know so i i don't know uh it's partly my baby face but it's partly you know uh there'd be some babies out there with some good personality i think that um <laughs> that tiktok i sent you the one holding the thing and then vibrating that was so weird <laughs> um so i but i ended i interrupted uh you like uh i think you were gonna like officially like start oh no i uh, we've already started welcome to oh, the, we? the, welcome to the decom team i don't know what voice this is <laughs> i feel like i'm already overtired <laughs> started and it's pretty late it's pretty late yeah it's 1045 <laughs> est for, for my see if i had a, if i had a sip of the motor or mortar oil that is dr pepper i i have nothing bad to say honestly about dr pepper yeah i think it's it's a really great treat <laughs> <laughs> we sound yeah. like we're we're advertising here not a sponsor um, I'm going to send no, you, I, just, I saw a TikTok where a guy was saying, like, I don't understand how people can drink Dr. Pepper. So I'm going to, I'm going to send that to you. Yeah, no, please send, send that my way. I have not, I definitely haven't seen that. I mean, I obviously disagree with, with this gentleman. Um, <laughs> I think, I think Dr. Pepper is <laughs> probably my favorite pop, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm honest. Oh, yeah it's just that yeah dr pepper is just a little bit harder to get um and it's not that you can't get it you obviously can but um <laughs> usually you walk into a convenience store and like it's like coke or pepsi staring you in the face um you go into this is an even worse offender is like a fast food joint um yes nobody yes. has nobody has nobody has that you go to a cafeteria nobody has dr pepper the only one um who did was arby's and we don't we've got the beef i don't, I, I don't think yeah i had the, the beef and they had the dr pepper and i don't think that they're in in town anymore are they not um, i know there's one in I'm, orleans is there still i think so. yeah oh, yeah but i don't think anyone okay. it's probably a, i don't think i ever see anyone in the parking lot so it's probably just a front for money laundering at this point because no one oh. actually eats their sandwiches, let's be honest. Oh, I I I was all over Arby's. Really? Oh, I was I was down for Arby's. Oh, absolutely. Because their their sandwiches were huge. Yeah. And they had curly meat also. Okay. And they had Dr. Pepper. 
I like it that we're making the sound like there's like a pro- prohibition on Dr. Pepper in Canada. <laughs> well, it's one of the, I, it's, maybe it's, it's partly a, because. It's not the, a myth. It's not a myth. No, it does. It does appear occasionally. Yeah. Very, it's um, very, but, mostly in convenience stores, I feel like. It's mostly in convenience stations. stores and, and sometimes it's not there. I mean, like you, especially you go to a smaller convenience store, there are fewer options and uh, sometimes like Dr. Pepper is one of the ones that just doesn't make the cut sometimes. But if you go to like a big, you know, highway stop, you know, you're, you're likely still to find it. But anyway, that was a long chat about Dr. Pepper. And that's really funny that this is like a podcast about Disney Channel original movies, but we're changing it into Dr. Pepper and Arby's. Well, let's, you know let's, uh, let's, let's, um, let's see if you can segue that. How, uh, how do we segue that? Uh, well, if you like Dr. Pepper, you're gonna love the DCOM team. Or how about let's wrap up this Dr. Pepper conversation and start talking about under wraps. Oh, shit. You're the host now. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. I like it. How I, you know, I feel like that's the best I could do. Okay. Um, I think we could do better. Segways are very difficult sometimes. And I think it's only right to kick off Halloween with the first ever Disney Channel original movie. Yeah, DCOM, DCOMs are, uh, you know, a lot of famous DCOMs out there. But if, if DCOMs themselves had like a brand, it would be Halloween. Yes, because I think that I think that they have like more Halloween movies than they have any other theme besides sports. Because there's no sports in this movie. <laughs> there, no, there are no. Which is surprising. No, there's no sport. Yeah, no, the main character is not uh, the star of his high school sports team. You're onto something though. Like there's definitely there's like a couple Christmas movies, but it feels like there's so many Halloween movies. There's at least at least eight. Un- okay, so let's do it. Let's uh, Halloween Town, Halloween Town Two, Halloween Town Three, Halloween Town Four, Under Wraps, which we're talking about today. Uh, Phantom of the Megaplex. Don't look under the bed. Scream Team. Fucking a! <laughs> this is the name name of our. That's our namesake, and I forgot it. <laughs> that's my favorite one. The Scream Team. Uh, I'm blanking. <laughs> is that it? Are there there's are there more? Eight? Well, that's that's eight, but I I feel like there's a couple more. I feel like I just saw some on Disney Plus. Oh well, and there's and there's the upcoming remake of the of Under Wraps. That hundred percent counts. That is nine. Oh, and there's, and there's the zombies movies. Are those all decoms? Yes, there's two of them. Those are decoms. I'm, I'm, I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking up this right now because what are, we're at eleven, right? Do you count the um, live action Kim Possible as a horror film? I do not. I would. I would not. I do not think so. Wouldn't, wouldn't oh, mom's mom's got a date with a vampire is definitely Halloween. I forgot about that one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, Twitch is in Twitch is two. Yes, fourteen. We're at fourteen. Oh, girl versus monster. That's one. So that's fifteen. So I have I have a like an amateur question for you. Um, I see Halloween Town and Halloween Town Two. Is Halloween Town High the third one? Yes. Okay. So that's what you call Halloween Town 3. Yes, yes. Halloween Town 3. And then the fourth one is Return to Halloween Town. Mr. Boogity. Wait, is that one? I don't know. And well, Mr. Bride Boogity? Of, Mr. Boogity and Bride of Boogity? That does not are those, sound like a are those, are those Mr. Towns? Boogity? I do not think that is a decom. Okay, it is it, it is a Disney branded movie. Oh, magical Disney+. magical world of Disney. 
Oh, okay. So technically, I mean, it's Disney, but it's technically not. But we digress. Either way, there is a lot of Disney horror. There, there is a, a good chunk of of decom Halloween films for sure. Are you, are you just think, per, are you just perusing through uh, uh, my my I, Disney Plus account? <laughs> I I am I, I am browsing your Disney Plus account. I shared. Um, well, you you've been so kind to 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 grant me access for the purpose of of watching some of these. I'm not gonna lie; I'm probably gonna be watching Muppet Haunted Mansion next week. Yeah, that comes out tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, oh, man, time flies. That is tomorrow. Yes, I am gonna be I, watching that this weekend. I wasn't no sure doubt. if right there you were just realizing this, or if you dropped your soda. <laughs> oh no no no! that was excitement i'd have been devastated if i dropped my coke zero for sure but uh i wanted to ask a lead-up question just Mm. with that it's it's obviously we're kind of getting to the spooky season it's the calendars turn to october we're recording this on on october 7th Uh, halloween's in the air are you hoping that i liked this movie oh i hope so i hope so (laughs) I was I was gonna ask if you have any horror movies that you watch to get yourself in the Halloween mood around this time of year. You know, I don't I don't always to be very honest, I don't always necessarily make a point to pull out the horror movies at Halloween. But I I would say that for me there are always a couple horror flicks that I come back to. And and they're there's nothing original about this or niche. Um, it's probably very cliche to say, but I am a fan of The Shining. You know, despite the discrepancies between the book and the movie, I've read the book. Um, I still love the movie. It, it is, it's just, it's a great, wonderful film. Um, and then Silence of the Lambs. Ooh, that's uh, a good the performance. Day. Performance of a lifetime. Um, you know, from Mr. Anthony Hopkins. Um, sure. Never to be outdone. I think that that is just like stands out to me as as one of the best horror flicks of all time. Have you horror heard? psychological thriller movie? Yeah, even even that's a conversation because is it thriller? Is it horror? I think it's a bit of both, right? Yeah, it's I it's a hundred percent both. I would say, yeah, okay. but like, yeah. It, and you could even compare it to like some of the others, like um, take Hannibal. I think it was I think it was just called Hannibal. Yeah, it's the second one. Yeah, which is like leans for me. Which actually, which one is the one with um, Ray Liotta? No idea. Is it Hannibal. Or is it, there's also one called Red Dragon. Red Dragon's one with Ed, with Ed Norton. Have you watched The Father? I have not, no. Okay, no. If, if you, if, if you like Anthony Hopkins, that, that's the one he won the Oscar for last year over uh, Chadwick Boseman. Yeah, I, I think, I, I'm sure that he's great in that. I think it's a slightly depressing subject. Oh, for sure. And I, and I, I don't know, like, I don't know. It just seems kind of sad to me, but I'm sure. I'm sure his, it's, his performance is great. It's honestly masterful with what they're able to do, like to turn like dimension to a horror movie, and just with what they do with the editing and everything is. Mm. It's it's it really puts you in that kind of headspace, and it's it's very very good. Wait, are you, wait, are you saying the father is a horror movie? Hmm. <laughs> it's 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 I, mainly a drama but just the yeah. way that it unfolds could definitely be seen as horror in the, in a way it's not scary but it's okay emotionally draining in a way that it's not it's not traditional horror we wouldn't put it in that genre but okay okay it's interesting very yeah. heavy in a way that it's just like okay what if we made dementia look kind of horror do you know what i mean yeah so don't if if you yeah. watch it, don't go into it expecting it to be a horror movie. But like I think you'll if you watch it, I think you'll see what I mean. Okay, 
Okay, that's I'm very intrigued now that you say that you that you describe it that way. Yeah. I might have to check it out. I think so. Yeah, uh, I, I thought you were gonna say when you said you were you're gonna pick uh, traditional ones. I thought you were gonna say like Beetlejuice or something. No, no, no. I I haven't. I have not. I don't even know for sure that I've seen Beetlejuice. Really? Yeah, I I think maybe I might have when I was a kid, but it's one of those things that's like it's part of the zeitgeist and like it, you know scenes from the movie play back at me and ring bells as though I have seen it but it but it, I don't know if it's just because it's such a huge part of popular culture or if it's because I actually saw the movie the cartoon I I watched a lot of the cartoon Beetlejuice it's um, a cartoon there, we've, seen, yeah. we've, we've seen we've said it too many times now he's gonna come get us oh no oh i didn't know uh, I, I would if beetlejuice showed up i think that'd be like pretty cool wouldn't it you said it three times so you're the one that's screwed <laughs> yeah well but am i though i mean isn't isn't beetlejuice like a, a good guy at the end of the day no i mean it's like anti-hero He's like, yeah, he's like a hunter. Yeah, but he's, he's, he's not like the worst. He's not like the worst thing that could happen to me, right? Probably not. I mean, you, you know, know, like, like Candyman would like be much worse. Candyman's Candy Man, gonna yeah, kill you, or like Bloody Mary, or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> I take Beetlejuice over those guys. We'll have to watch it though. Well, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I like that movie a lot. What uh, what movie are we talking about again? Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice? Oh, uh, deep, like the deep like we're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have we, have yeah. we started? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, I'm no, gonna. No, no, I'm no, gonna no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not complaining at all. I'm not complaining at all. No, no, no. Um, I just would. I would like pose the same question to you. Oh, sure. And I, I, I suspect that you, you know, would have a. a you obviously have a good handful of decoms to go to. Um. But is there is there like one Halloween flick that like if you didn't watch in October you would you would just like die? Specifically, decom or anything? No, any any anything. Um, you see, like I love Halloween. I I really like the spirit of Halloween, even though I go to a movie on halloween night because i just don't i don't like the ding dong ding dong ding dong you know what i mean mm-hmm. like i'm a scrooge i go i go to a movie instead like i i trick or treated when i was a kid so i'm not paying it back at all i'm like no i don't know if if there's a movie in october that i specifically watch every year but if i didn't if i didn't watch scream or cabin in the woods at least once a year at any time it's, it's probably not a good year <laughs> okay at least scream. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, that's a classic for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, do, when, when you go to a movie on Halloween, do you like try to go to a new, like a Halloween movie, like a horror movie, if there is one? It's, it's funny because because I, I usually go with my mom, of course. Um, we've gone we've gone to a movie since like 2012. So I think okay. the first time it was Sinister. Mm-hmm. And then Taken 2. Okay. I can't remember any other year other than um, I think in 2018, we went to actually see uh, the night, the John Carpenter Halloween because it was playing in theaters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I'm, I'm sure I did the same um the year that uh, David Gordon Green's Halloween came out. So it, it, traditionally, it's more probably trying to say, okay, what what horror movie is playing? But like, yeah. if there's no good horror movies or if I've seen them all, like I was probably akin to do like before pandemic, right? I think I, I probably saw like everything, but. Hey, Daniel in post-production here. Bobby and I started talking about what movies would be in theaters around Halloween and what we might go see next together and almost planning that trip so you don't really need to listen to that. So let's jump right back into it with Bobby talking about his in-laws coming to visit, who I'm sure are very nice people. Oh, so we've, we've already like had 
talks about like what we're going to do when they're here. And so I think that I think that we might try and see see no time to die when my family's here. Okay. Well, yeah. When there's family around, there's definitely a time to die. Well, it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that was a good one it's a good joke good one. it's a great yeah, joke yeah. even sure i'm sure that's uh but um yeah to, the first to answer to answer your question yeah. <laughs> yeah sorry to answer your question though the i'm pretty sure halloween kills comes out on the 17th so probably or the 15th so I'll probably see that before halloween okay we'll go i'll go right into my synopsis sure i think i mean i think the synopsis is is a really great way to start just because it, it adds just enough context for people um yeah. to understand the rest of the conversation i think we would recommend you watch the movie first yes. before listening to the discussion yeah you're you're right we, we spoiled everything so we're gonna jump into under wraps uh spoilers from here they no turning back now do not press that stop button mm -hmm. But if you want to, you can. But uh, all right, you ready? You ready for story time? Yeah, yeah, no, go for it. I'm already. Right. In a small town, a kid named Marshall lives for horror films. His buddy Gilbert does not, but he goes for the ride regardless. He's scared of his own shadow. For example, example. Oh God. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> You're also gonna see like I haven't uh, read this I haven't read this through yet, so you're gonna see like if if I have any typos, I'm gonna go with the typos. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, just read the typo. It's totally okay. fine. Nobody will notice. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So for example, he's a paper boy who hasn't. Fuck me. It's already a typo. <laughs> We're keeping all of this in. <laughs> it's good comedy. Uh, Okay, for, for example, he's a paper boy and hasn't collected pay from his local neighbor, Mr. Kubat, for two years because he's terrified of his house. And for good reason. When they knock on his door, he lets his dog's leash go, so the dog chases them down the street. What an asshole. Uh, then we find out that Marshall has a horrible home life. His parents are separated, and his mom's new boyfriend, Ted, is way too nice, which is kind of the audacity, right? Then we learn Gilbert also has a weird home life his his mom is a bit too obsessed with dolls where she takes them to movies and wants to be called esmeralda esmeralda when she's on a dungeons and dragons quest back in 1997 before it was cool um and mr Kubat Co when mr kubat dies of a heart attack uh marshall and gilbert's friend amy gets wind that he that mr kubat was once a museum curator in new york and has a lot of cool creepy things in his basement she suggests they go look around because the kid saw that he has a coffin in there. Marshall agrees to check it out, though Gilbert is very hesitant. They go to the house and find the coffin, and then run away because they're scared. And then when they go back in, because Gilbert loses his glasses, they see what was in it, a real-life mummy. They meet him when he crashes through a wall, but he's just trying to return Gilbert's glasses, and they realize that he's harmless. Like a stray dog, Marshall wants to take him in and he immediately and they immediately make a connection in a story about a relationship between a boy and his monster, but just one that might turn into ashes if they don't return him to his coffin by Halloween night at midnight. And that would be a wrap. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you write that? Do you write that? I do. You do this not to yourself? Okay. No, that, I think that's pretty good. Thank you. That covers and, uh, all the important points for sure. Did you did you sense anything there that you wanted to start with? The first thing that I I would point out is just if I can talk through my feelings about the movie, it's just sort of what I was feeling for the first twenty minutes or so. Um, I know it's a Disney movie. I know it's a kids movie. But as I'm watching, as we're getting into the house, as they they explore the basement i i get scared yeah and like they do a pretty good job of um i mean you know what's going to happen you know something's going to pop out somewhere right and mm -hmm. often there are a lot of false alarms uh in a horror movie where you think something's going to pop out and it's just like oh it's just a dummy or oh just my friend or just like you know the wardrobe or whatever but so I still like felt that fear for, for a bit because you knew there was a mummy. 
he knew it got out and you knew they were going to bump into it somehow. And so you're like, you're waiting for that moment. Mm -hmm. And then I think it turned for me and I thought it was fantastic. It was a wonderful moment, but when he's got them cornered and he's lumbering down the hallway towards them moaning and then stops at the bathroom, peeks in, sees the toilet, and just like walks into the bathroom. And you hear him like pissing in the toilet. <laughs> and and they're just like waiting for him to finish. Um, I I sort of knew like that was a great gag, first of all. And I think this yeah. is like this is pre-Austin Powers. Um, yes, that's exactly what I know? thought is such an Austin Powers it, joke. It, yeah, it is. It, yeah. Um they're both 97, so could have cheated oh, off each other. Oh, the, oh that's, that's interesting. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, holy cow. That Austin, Austin Powers is that old. 1997. Wow. And anyway, I thought it, it still, it was a great gag <laughs> and it, it worked with, with this mummy. And I knew then, though, that it was like going to be much more fun than scary and i knew it was you know it was going to be a kid's movie so it wasn't going to be like a horror film but it still could have been you know there's there's some good some good you know goose goosebumpsy type stuff out there where it's like for kids but it's a little bit scary um and so that the the mood kind of changed for me a little bit um but i was totally okay with it um but i think you know, I knew it was going to be like more of a comedy. Um, okay. And I, and I think it, it kind of was like, I, it, I think it was, it's kind of a comedy. Like it's not, it's not really a horror film. Um, it's just, it's more of a sort of a fun comedic, you know, yeah. kids Halloween movie. You, you hadn't seen this before, right? I've never seen this before. It was okay, first, first time. time. First time. Yeah. Okay. yeah, no, but like, um, with your point about like, kind of like Goosebumps vibes, like, I mean, there's some scary episodes of Goosebumps, even Are You Afraid of the Dark, right? And like mm -hmm. Tales yeah. from the Crypt Keeper or just wh whatever the Canadian anim animated show was called for that version. I remember watching that show when I was a kid and like the episode where they go into a haunted house and there's like an old old lady ghost. I, I remember watching that and I'm pretty sure I just ran up the stairs. I was like, nope. Because the, the, the only thing time I've ever done that was when uh, I was watching Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure and that scene with the eyes popping out of that woman uh I, I don't know that? if I've seen that actually no I wasn't I wasn't big into Pee Wee Herman okay well pe people listening will agree with me that that moment is fucking scary uh, I'm I'm sure I'm sure yeah I was just gonna say with with Goosebumps I think I actually was such a huge Goosebumps fan that I had read most of the books. And so okay. each episode was like, you know, based on a book that I had already read. So I kind of, I kind of like knew what was coming. Okay. Um, but, but they were, they were, you know, could still like give you, give you goosebumps. Haha. <laughs> uh -huh. Good one, my friend. Um, for under wraps, like I get what you mean about the, the horror though, just because like, I found with this, I found the sets kind of creepy, like that base, that basement, that's exactly how you imagine that if you're going to a creepy house, that's how you imagine the basement to look like cobwebs everywhere. Like, I thought mm -hmm. like the, thought like the lighting was good. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it feels like a whole, like it's lit like a horror movie. Yeah. And I, and I, and I also think that the, the just the, the way it was shot um, is, they were playing for the classic jump scares mm -hmm. right so when he's looking he's hanging upside down through the window looking around the basement in the dark without his glasses yeah. you, right you know like every camera move you're waiting for something to to pop up and so like that's where that's kind of where it started um until they finally like meet the dummy uh the mummy the, the dummy you disrespect Harold like this? That's a uh, goosebumps thing. I got stuck in my head now. Oh yes, the, the, the yeah, yeah, dummy. The, the dummy. Um, yeah, so something. like they start. They start. Do you remember his name? The dummy. Yeah. Now let me look it up. Let me fit this. Let me fit this. 
N Night mm. of the Living Dummy. Here's Bob. Something that starts with an S. Slappy. Oh, yeah. That's it. Fucking yeah. slappy. What a little jerk. Yeah. Now, what, sorry, what, what were we talking about? I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah, right. You called the, you called the mummy a dummy. I called the mummy a dummy. Oh, yeah. I was, I was just saying how they were like, you know, playing to that anticipation that we all feel, that anxiety that we all feel when. Mm -hmm you're expecting a jump scare um and that that is what made it scary because it's like you hadn't seen the mummy yet so you don't know what it's going to look like so there's that you don't know when it's going to pop out so I, I i like that it was like just good old-fashioned like horror jump scare anticipation in the beginning yeah and i also i liked how they played with just um kind of like a kid's perspective almost when they first see mr kubat and they go up to his house and like how mm -hmm. like it's almost like foggy like he's kind of under a spotlight and he's like like back in shadows because I, I feel like if you were a kid like going up to that creepy house in your neighborhood like that's exactly what you're expecting to see right yeah well it's kind of like um did you have a house like that when you were a kid in your neighborhood uh did we have a no not not really actually no, no I, I don't think I don't think I had I don't think I really had any like weird or creepy neighbors that you know we always wondered about or were always afraid of maybe just it's, maybe it's just an American thing because I don't know if I had yeah either. I mean yeah I guess it's a sort of a bit of a trope too in yeah. movies but but, they, but but you're right I mean it's almost like the it, it's <laughs> I have to. I'm gonna have to edit this chunk out. I think it's. I think it's just fun that there's always like those neighborhood stories, right? Like when Gilbert says, like, "Oh, like he egged Mr. Kubot's car, and then he was never seen again," and then and it's like he moved to Toronto, and he's like, "Aha, he never writes." Yeah, yeah. Well, there, the, the, I actually, I, I thought there were some really good gems, uh, in here with when it comes to comedy, um, uh -huh. that. Even though I don't know, even though it's ninety seven, it felt fresh. Um, the like Toronto joke. There's the obviously the mummy like going to the bathroom. Um, there's a crack about. Um, it, it almost it was really weird. It almost didn't need to be there at all, and I I I kind of sort of know why they did it, but when um her crush comes to them at the locker and she like tells him to F off basically. And then she's like, he's seen the Olsen twins movie twice. Like what <laughs> kind of person does that? I, yeah. Well, I think I wrote that quote down. Uh... She said something like, how can you respect a man who watches the Olsen twins movie twice or something like that? Yeah, that's exactly. So I, I, I thought that was pretty funny. I thought there were some really good, clever cracks in that. it feels like that see lines like that feel like a time capsule right and then mm -hmm. uh bruce the effects guy goes like i don't care what siskel and ebert say uh that was art wait so what did I, he say so i said it again what, what did um, he say? that like the fx guy they're talking about warthead and he's like i don't care what siskel and ebert say that was art oh i don't care what siskel and ebert say okay yeah 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 now can we can we talk about the the warthead like the beginning of the movie because it's the movie within a movie yeah um like it's just the campy, so actually, I, campy b movie i kind of it's funny when when we started this discussion i i totally forgot about that because when i when i was when i was watching i even messaged you and i was like oh my god this dude is like the dad and everything yeah and then, <laughs> virtue and I from Ethan Stevens. Yeah, and then that was before I realized that like that was just a <laughs> movie that the characters were watching. Um, and I and I thought it was weird. I thought it was like, man, they're really getting into the monster stuff really fast here. Um, and and I and I also was thinking like this looks like it was shot on a camera phone. Like this is like this is terrible. 
Um, and then finally, it, you they like cut away and you see they're in a movie theater watching a scary movie. Um, Go ahead, sorry. No, I, I was only going to ask just you talk about what did you call him, Warthead? Yeah, War. It's the movie is called Warthead. The it's uh, Warthead Four. I didn't write down the name of it, but it's Warthead Four, something in the forest. Okay, does that just exist in the universe of this movie, or is that like yes. a real thing? I th- I'm pretty okay. sure it just it's, it, it, it's a rape. It's a rape. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ripoff of uh, Toxic Avenger. <laughs> Listeners, I'm always going to point out my own mistakes <laughs> at my own peril. Uh- <laughs> That's a rape. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's because it's so late. Honestly, I think these oh are the best. It's 1130. I think it's always the best time to like record these at night. Because like, <laughs> yeah, don't know if this is you don't know if this is gonna be funny in mid-afternoon, but it's right now uh, it's just like oh <laughs> I mean, like who has a slip of the tongue? <laughs> It's a rape. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. It's a. Mm. It's a ripoff you know, of the Atomic Adventure. Actually, I I could if I can sort of springboard off of your slip of the tongue. Um, oh really? You're, you're, it was. You it was a way to. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 Because because I I actually I thought. <laughs> <laughs> you, you say that's a rape and I'm like I can work with that <laughs> I can work with that <laughs> perfect segue <laughs> that is how you segue <laughs> uh, um, but but like in, in all seriousness there, I, I thought um, for a decom there were a couple of like kind of risque jokes that they slipped in there Oh, that's um, like the okay. thing about yeah yeah no just like the thing about um i sleep in the nude i sleep in the nude about like wearing a bra and there was also um yeah the celibate one she said something about him yeah like um that your son no he's celibate no we'll see about that. Oh, he, he he said what um he said what's celibate and she's like that's like when you never get to be with a girl or something like that and he said oh no i would never want to do that and she said don't worry you'll get used to it oh yeah yeah like uh like oh yeah you don't go with chicks and he's like oh like that's that sounds bad he's like so she's calling her calling him an incel right <laughs> basically yeah she yeah. was like he, he basically said, oh, yeah, I would never want to be a virgin forever. And she's like, don't worry, you're going to be, but you'll get used to it. <laughs> is basically what she was saying. Yeah. That's, uh, 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 thank you for. Anyway, that's that's, that's how you good, segue from. That, you know, that's, uh, yeah. I, had, I, had, I had the risque jokes on my notes. So that's a, that's a good point. Oh, okay. perfect. Yeah. Go, going back to Warhead, though, like. Yeah. Did you think that was scary? Because I know what, like, even today, like, it's just kind of like, oh, sh- I, f- I forgot it started like this. But, like, when I was a kid with, like, the the, the knife swirling around and the, sa- and the garbage disposal and the, and the Mr. Warthead going, like, do you believe in me now? Or yeah. am I real enough for you? Like, that's that's pretty yeah. scary to a kid, I think. I, I think I think it would be. Um, I, I wasn't. I wasn't really sold by the the look. It just looked like a, you know, a Disney Channel monster to me. There wasn't anything particularly scary there. But I think the again the anticipation, knowing that like a monster is going to pop out. But for me, it truly it was the knife and and the way they were playing that. I was like, shit, are they like is that actually going to like fly up into his throat or something? Like, are they really going to go there? 
what are we watching <laughs> um yeah like this is crazy um but i i didn't find yeah i i mean i didn't find him that scary as a monster okay. to be honest I, yeah you know this movie came out 24 years ago and i'm 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 kind of surprised that no one's been like hey let's make a warhead movie because it's i watched that yeah i i mean i feel like they did make a warhead movie it's about five minutes and it's at the beginning of uh under wraps of this movie <laughs> yeah okay. i mean because that's what it would be it'd be like him hiding and there'd be a kid sees a monster and nobody believes him and he pops out and kills everybody and then the end and then he'd, he'd grow up to to get revenge uh yeah well that would be the sequel yeah yeah okay <laughs> yeah. we were talking about the we were talking about the humor was there anything that didn't work for you um if i'm being very honest there there were probably a couple things that fell flat for me but i actually thought especially early on i i thought the three kids were really good and actually the the, the four kids if you count um was it randolph or something randolph? Bruce, the fx guy oh leonard Leonard, sorry, yeah, it was Leonard, Leonard. Uh, the little, um, little snot nosed one that says, goofy. Wow, it was yellow. Yeah. I can't remember. <laughs> <Is that goofy? laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that kid, I thought, I, I thought, Leonard. I thought he was kind of funny, but but I thought the three kids were really good, and I and I actually thought specifically, um, you know, their their the timing was really good, mm-hmm. um, and and it, it's just I don't know if it's editing or if it's the acting, but like the silences before the reaction, um, the looks that they give each other. Um, I actually thought it was like it was pretty slick. I thought I thought that they like they played the okay. comedy very well. Um, the, I don't I don't I don't know if it was the comedy, but probably the only place where it ran a little bit dry for me is once they got him up into his bedroom for the first time, and then they were kind of just talking and it, it seemed like it was just like the same shot for the whole scene. And it, it just, it went a little bit dry there. Is that the one where the mom came up? It was, yeah, it's pretty much after the mom left. And okay. then they're like talking about like what to do. Um, I can't even remember that and scene. Just, so there's like no soundtrack. There's, there's, I think like just kind of an awkward angle and slow yeah just it felt really slow and dry compared to like what the how what the first 20 minutes would be had been i'm gonna in in my humble opinion in your humble opinion in your humble opinion but it picked uh, up again pretty quickly yeah for sure now the i forgot to do the cast list so i'll we'll we'll go through these strategically now with we mentioned the cast so yeah I'll just say that Mario Yadida plays Marshall, and he hasn't really done anything since then. Um, Clara Bryant plays Amy. She was on True, Conf- Con- True Confessions. And also, uh, Adam Wiley plays Gilbert. He was uh, plays one of the kids in Kindergarten Cop. You, you would recognize him from some things. And interestingly, he... I think he still works in Hollywood somewhat. He was he was additional. I saw that he was credited as additional voices on Mitchell's versus the Machines, which was a pretty good movie oh, okay. on Netflix. Yep. Um, nice. He's pretty pretty big on TikTok. He has a million followers on TikTok. He's a he's a wow. he's a magician now. Oh, I've seen his uh, lives okay. a couple of times, and I've I've just I've gone through, I've just <laughs> been scrolling on my for you for you page, and he's doing the live and he was showing card tricks and stuff so that's pretty cool awesome good for him <clears throat> now did you have any jumping off points from like like did you did you feel like clara bryan had a lot to do here because i felt like she had that one scene where she was clogged dancing and then she was just <clears throat> kind of like almost a story device to kind of for marshall and just be like aha they might like each other <laughs> Well, I, yeah, I, I wasn't even, I didn't even really notice the, the, like, I didn't get any will they, won't we, won't they vibes from them. Um, I got absolutely no sense of any kind of 
romantic you, story you didn't and and oh, no sorry. and no I, I didn't until she turned away that kid at at the locker okay. and I thought okay well they, they're doing this for a reason like she to show that she's not interested in other people um so okay it must be that there's going to be something with her and and one of them Okay. Um, but but they didn't. I mean that that really fell flat. If they were going for some kind of a story between them uh, romantically, it, that didn't really land there, for me. There there is that. Uh, sorry, there is that. I wrote it down word for word because I thought it was very cringy. Um, mm -hmm. There is that scene where Kubot turns his gun on uh, Marshall, and uh, Harold the mummy beats him away, and then they're celebrating, yeah. and she's like. Marshall, when I when I saw the gun, I thought, if something ever happened to you, well, well, it didn't, so everything's okay. Yeah. Like, no, that that was that was like that was super awkward. <clears throat> that was yeah, and that, I mean that was like right towards the end, but but I I think that that was yeah. I probably my biggest complaint about the movie, like that one moment. It's just that it one so moment forced in. Yeah, I I think so. Yeah. It, it did feel forced. It did not feel very natural at all. Yeah, I, I just didn't think she had much to do, even though I like her acting. Well, I, I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm less sure about whether she was unnecessary, if she was, un I, I mean, I think, I think the three of them together still worked fairly mm. well. I think it's, I, I, think I it's do like think a, so. A perfect rule of three, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I at think least one of them is gonna feel like they're not as useful in certain times yeah I think that I think the probably the only thing is that the reason that she felt a bit out of place is that um there wasn't much of an arc for her yeah. um I thought that I thought that you know she she was helpful and she was one of their friends and as a as a, a you know a group of three friends they worked very well together but she didn't have the same arc. Um, and I, I, I don't, I would argue she didn't really have any arc. Um, yeah, I agree. You know, the, um, the other two, you know, were dealing basically with uh, one had a daddy issue and one had a uh, self-esteem issue yeah scared of everything you know? yeah so and so those you know those those were interesting by the way i also wanted to point out um and i'm so bad with names but the the scaredy cat what's his name uh gilbert gilbert thank you um i i thought it was a really nice touch that gilbert was so afraid of everything and had these these self-esteem issues and yet um thought his mom was totally normal when the whole doll thing is like weird as hell like so I thought that was like he's scared of all these things except his mom has like this doll collection obsession and takes them to movies and buys them popcorn and like that's you're not afraid of that like that's yeah. normal to you but I thought that was kind of that was kind of funny that he had that um as sort of as part of his character. I, I think I rewatched this like two years ago, but even from then I forgot all about about that subplot. And I was like, wow, yeah. that, that's that's actually a thing in this movie. Yeah. And <laughs> and it wasn't funny. even like it, it didn't really um I mean his mother didn't really have a role and his sort of mom's doll obsession didn't even really um uh, wasn't wasn't that important it was just sort of an interesting dimension to his character yeah. um to have to to be to be dealing with that um, um look look he's what, what's the word he's not well accustomed because his mom mom is such a weirdo <laughs> yeah like yeah maybe yeah yeah no. um and and you know what? While while we're at it, I will say too that like the daddy issue thing, that that wasn't like that wasn't a very 
well-rounded arc either <clears throat> it was yeah. just like oh i hate my new daddy and then at the end oh okay my new daddy's okay it's actually it's, it's actually kind of a, expanded on in the remake i think they make it more of a point you've seen the remake yes okay i'm 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 actually like i so i want to reiterate first of all that i really did enjoy this movie okay i i was expecting to not like it um as you do with just, every decom just, just because <laughs> as i do every decom i don't know why i'm here um I <laughs> <no>. <laughs> uh, uh, just because of how old it is you know so i i expected um to get something like you know don't look under the bed or something like that but it, it was really it, it was good it was good i really enjoyed it okay um what would what what was what was i gonna say though um something about a remake oh and yeah okay issues? so i yes so i enjoyed this movie and so i am i am really really excited to see what the remake looks like because i'm just i'm just really curious to see where they took it now um okay. can we can we put a pin in the daddy issues because I, I just i'd love to like go through like the rest of the funny lines I had written down and then yeah, maybe absolutely. just you can either grade them of how funny you thought they were or maybe okay. maybe it it's, maybe it sparks a thought in your mind I don't know how many I have okay. but can I go through the sure no I, I like this yeah I just, I, so yeah let's let's start with start with Jan Leonard uh well how would you grade the line well it was very yellow like he freaking yells <laughs> yellow <laughs> I there was something about that kid's delivery that just gave me so much joy. Yeah. <laughs> so it, was, it really, yeah, like I he just his lines landed. Um and I had a I had a chuckle um okay. pretty much every time he opened his mouth. Well, good for you, Leonard. You're the you're the star of the show. Yeah, um, totally. Especially in the beginning when you first see him when he's got his wifey. He's like, no, I just use it to wipe it off. This is a rag. This is a rag for when I get <laughs> dirty. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it was wonderful. Leonard needs his Leonard needs his own movie. I really think he he does. There's there's just like overall there there's just like a um, a level of goofiness, just a level of silliness. That is, Leonard or just the whole movie? Well, well, partly through Leonard, but but also in in the Mummy, I loved. I don't know if we're gonna get to this, but but like he never talks, right? But yeah, but sometimes he like mumbles sounds that sound like they might be words, and I I laughed so hard when he um, the Mummy throws him up over the wall. Yes, <laughs> and. And, he's okay and he's like he's okay <laughs> just, just, uh, he yeah. he i mean i'm not doing it justice obviously but but the um yeah he basically turned after getting you know in trouble for throwing him too hard um and then he hears him say i'm okay and the mummy turns and says, oh see he's okay and i i just i i thought, I thought that was like that was about. wonderful I like that. I Delightful. Like that. And that's just that's just like silly, right? That's just like silliness to be it's silly. Okay. Um, and I and I I loved all of that in this movie. Me too. Me too, actually. Now yeah. I, I, I have so much to say about the mummy. So I'm gonna go through mm -hmm. these one-liners and then okay. we'll we'll get to everything the mummy because okay. I feel like Perfect. that's a very interesting conversation that we've left for yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, this is kind of it has to do with the mummy, but it's it's the bit where the kid, where that small kid sees Harold the mummy, and he says, "Wow, you're ugly," and the mum says, "Some people are born special." And he says, "Well, this guy's really special." Yeah, that, that was a really good one liner. I, I mean, it, it was it was cute. I the I think I I just found it. Um. That one I felt, I felt a little bit awkward about that one just because like, okay, <clears throat> the whole joke was that like, 
um, she doesn't actually know what he's talking about because she has her back to the mummy. Right. And if she could see him, obviously she would react differently. <clears throat> and I guess, I guess the problem that I had is like at that point, he's out there in public. Right. Like it, it doesn't matter that this one particular woman has her back to him. Like other people can see him. He's standing right there. He's running around in, in plain view. Mm-hmm. So I didn't, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I just didn't buy, I didn't buy that moment. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You think more people would be scared of him? More people would think he's ugly? Either people are going to be scared or they're going to think it's weird or they're going to ignore it. Sure. Um. You know, even in the hospital, like nobody, like the doctors thought he was a burn victim. Yes. And before that, he walked he walked down the halls freely past everyone. Um, so it 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 wasn't. It just I guess the problem is that it wasn't clear how the public was supposed to be reacting to him, like because everyone reacted differently. Yeah. Um. And it, it just, it became to the point where like, it felt like it didn't matter that he was in public. Yeah, the, you know, that's a, that's a good point. Cause I, I, I feel like, I feel like people only, re, I feel like people only react when it's appropriate for the script. Otherwise the whole movie would be like, oh, you can't go anywhere with everyone being like, wow, what are you? Yeah. But yeah, no, that's honestly, that's a, that's an interesting point, I think. That, like more people would react to him. Yeah, and it, and it just it but when it's like that too, you you lose the sense of urgency to get him out of there. Okay. Because well, if 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 people don't really care, or it's it's not clear that people notice him or care or are afraid, then it's like then then you don't it doesn't feel like oh they have to find him and get him out of there it's like well actually it looked it seemed like it's kind of fine so like there's no rush guys so it it takes away from the urgency of the of the plot you know okay yeah i'm gonna have to have to i'm gonna have to have a think on that yeah i mean that you know that's like one guy's take (laughs) your take okay i like your yeah that's my take now um let's talk about that scene though like that you're bringing up which is like the whole sequence of him going from the drive through and getting an orange soda and then <laughs> to to the little kid and then to the hospital where he gets defibrillated yeah. and uh, yeah because they can't find a pulse and then he like mock he mimic he mimes up all of it back like <clears throat> i feel like that's that's this classic sequence in decom history because just that's I find that so funny that the whole that yeah. whole entire secret and 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 to sort of to to add to my point that's what gets us through that scene is is just is the comedy right like mm-hmm. you're not feeling you know I, I didn't feel like oh my god they got to catch him like oh my god he's going in there oh my god they're gonna see him like I, I wasn't thinking any of that I was just like enjoying watching the goofiness right yeah. it's like going through a drive through oh you want a double cheeseburger okay um <laughs> that's a good that's and then a good like joke. drinking the, drinking the pop and and like um and seeing his know, friend like wrapped up like almost like like a real seeing, exactly see, seeing uh, like a guy in a cast oh. in a wheelchair and thinking that that's another <laughs> mummy um i i thought that i I thought that was all pretty funny and it was yeah it was a good laugh watching that sequence i think so right yeah, yeah. now and that's that's what like carried the sequence was was just the comedy like even even as a kid like i don't think i was ever scared by his movement because like pretty early on they're like oh no this is he moves goofy like, mm-hmm. like he's he's very animated like you yeah. reanimate the corpse <laughs> but like he's very like not scary because he, he doesn't mean anyone any harm i think it's established pretty early that he's more like a protector right yeah and that's going back to my first point right is is that like the second that he decides to go into the bathroom <laughs> um you know now how this movie's gonna go 
you, you know what to expect from this mummy. Like this is not a scary movie anymore. Um, you know, get ready for the for the gags. Um, and so that that moment like really set up the rest of the, the film for me. He pees just like us, you know. He pees just like us, and I knew I could expect, um, you know, I just all the empathy came it's, flowing through me. It starts the relatability like pretty early on. Yeah, absolutely. I know what it's like to have to pee. I, I, I feel you, man. I, I've never held my bits for about 4,500 years. but uh, Yeah, no, not quite that long. Of course, I've never had the opportunity to try. So. Would, you? Would, you, would, you, would you try if you had the opportunity? Um, if somebody said, hold your piss for 4,500 years. I mean, yeah, you only live once. I mean, you only many lifetimes for 4,500 years. Are we all going to be chiro chiro what's, what's the word? Chiro, chiro freeze? Chiro frozen? Like the Gossam powers? And then we can actually test it out? Cryogenically frozen, yeah. Cryo. cryo. Oh, I don't, I don't think I would actually do that. I don't. Oh, you wouldn't? Yeah. No. No. I, don't know I wouldn't I, want to miss. I wouldn't, wouldn't want to miss anything. I don't yeah. want to miss a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No. Um. I had. Uh, anyway, had that's some... another podcast. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I had some. Uh, I had some Gilbert lines, and I would like you to rank them from one to three on your favorite. Okay. Okay. So the first one was the scene where. Gilbert's mm. talking about his mom and his doll and her dolls. And she was gonna, he says he was gonna tell her about Harold. And he says, I was gonna tell my mom, but if, if she's having a tea party with her dolls, it's best not to interrupt her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then he says, um, breaking into a dead guy's house and on a school night. <laughs> and then uh, one of his first lines was uh them getting out of the movie house or movie i was gonna call it a movie house but the movie theater and he says uh, that he loves something more like sound of music and he says singing dancing and nazis what's not so like <laughs> exactly yeah I, I i think that is my favorite line i actually think it's funny because i think i'd probably rank them in the order that you read them as three two one oh interesting uh, with the with the nazi line being my favorite that's the first thing that like stuck in my head watching this um but I wanted to remember was the Nazi thing oh interesting. That, that was that was pretty funny yeah okay <laughs> and a, like a little it. bit I feel like a little bit risque like I feel like if you did that today you'd like you'd get canceled like the movie would get like canceled yeah I mean there's definitely not any Nazi <laughs> jokes in they were in the remake <laughs> yeah I couldn't couldn't do it <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I get you. I would like to ask just, did you notice, before we get into the mummy, did you notice any like decom cliches that you've picked, on so, picked up so far? Well, I don't know. I don't know, actually. That's, I'd, I'd have to take a long time to think about that, actually. I think you kind of hit on something earlier when you mentioned like sports, sports movies. Yeah. There are a lot of cliches to pick out when you talk about like the decom sports movies. Um, I mean, it's it is it is definitely a cliche to have um, some kind of parent issue, right? Whether it's like a, yes. you're dealing with a single parent or a, a, re, a replacement parent of some kind, um, dealing with a mother figure, father figure. I mean that that's that's a pretty cliche thing to have in there. Um, it's a pretty, but it's a pretty easy, um, you know, character arc to work with. Yeah, that's <clears> true. And it's, it's relatable for a lot of kids, um, you know. So you want me to tell you the one I'm thinking of? Yes, please. Yeah, go for it. Sure. I think the biggest one, mm -hmm. like the biggest staple is just for these Halloween ones that they always, there's always a time constraint to Halloween night. And there's 
always a Halloween carnival. Right. Almost almost always a Halloween carnival. I don't think there's a Halloween carnival in Don't Look Under the Bed because I think that I, that's actually one of the decom movies that actually kind of go away from that traditional structure. But for the most yeah. part, the time constraints are Halloween night with them having to get Harold back into his coffin or otherwise he turns to ash. And then the Bay how there's like a smaller Halloween carnival that they actually go to. I like mean, in, in the Scream team, there's that big festival on Halloween night, right? Yeah, that that is, I I, I mean, I would agree, and I, I I but I think I think it it goes beyond you know decoms and Halloween movies. The time constraint is just such a such a trope in so many so many stories. Yeah, because it's because it's so useful. It's just it's perfect. It's perfect to create tension um to have a time constraint yeah that's true and i mean i know you didn't feel the tension of anyone catching him but you probably felt that tension a little bit eh yeah that that was that was it you know it was it wasn't about like the the tension of him being caught in public it was just it was just straight like will they get him back in his sarcophagus on time um and oh that's where uh, by the way it um <clears throat> it it was starting to go a little bit dry when they were up in his bedroom for the first time but then right after that is when they sort of introduced the villain properly and, and showed yeah and they showed that he was still alive that he had this gang of bad guys and it was like ah okay this is where we're going is okay now it, it's not so much about being caught in public it's about like getting caught by the bad guy. so the, the bad guys are trying to find the mummy and they're gonna have to try and protect him from the bad guys did, did you like so that like, twist ah, okay. did you like that he ah. faked his death for to escape tax evasion uh <laughs> hmm I I don't I don't know if I would even call it a twist. A little, little um, twist for the, I think it's more of a twist for the kids than it was for us. Is that fair? Yeah, say? yeah. I mean, when we're talking about plot, it just adds another layer of tension because you need you need those obstacles, right? So you have sure. you have the time you have the goal, which is to get him back in the sarcophagus, and then you just throw obstacles at them and you've got a movie and you know it wouldn't be the mummy isn't the antagonist right so somebody has to be somebody's got the main be the main antagonist so it wasn't surprising at all that it was him and like the i don't know the tax stuff i don't know whatever that they had to come up with something right it didn't it didn't really matter what matters is that they had some bad guys who were trying to catch them and it made for more attention i feel like i liked that twist when i was a kid or i was just like right yeah oh wow wow he was supposed to be <clears throat> dead he, he said he was dead but he's not <laughs> yeah i i mean i guess it so it i don't know it just it felt like kind of an empty twist if that means anything it was like technically okay. a twist oh he's alive but like didn't really didn't really matter like the bad guy could have been anybody who was trying to recover the mummy i think we're gonna wrap up <laughs> well because sure. we oh. we've, we've buried the lead we're good so i think we're gonna wrap up with a conversation about the mummy okay we've talked about okay. harold the mummy throughout but i just i got asked did you, did you recognize the voice no that's bill foggerbaki patrick star what yeah it's built by what? patrick star is the voice Are of you Harold. Serious? Yeah. And it's oh. it's interesting because it's 1997 and SpongeBob didn't start until 1999. And I feel like yeah. with the grunts, if you know that that's Bill Foggerbaki, or yeah. I think it's Fagerbaki, uh, uh, Foggerbaki, Fagerbaki, yeah. I'm sorry, Bill. But either way, it's just, that, yeah, it's Patrick Starr. I feel like you can be like, ah, that voice is, is was this the, the origins of Patrick Starr with him grunting and grumbling. Yeah, I, I feel like I can hear it now. 
now that you say it, I'm like, oh yeah, totally. That's him. You're like, oh. Yeah. 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 No, absolutely. That's crazy. I had no idea. That is that we definitely buried the lead. I, you know, I, I kind of, I wanted to, to, to structure it like a twist, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's a great, uh, great twist there for sure. You know, well, one thing I thought was interesting too, was the fact that he played, he plays Ted as well. The, 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 the mom's boyfriend. Oh, he plays Ted him. and the mummy. Oh, so it, he's, he's also physically like the body for the mummy too. That I do not know. I'd assume so because it seems kind of it's it's very much his build, right? So, okay, can yeah. I? I'm gonna look, it. I want to look that up because this this is an interesting tidbit of information. But it's, I, and I will explain as, why. As you vet that, I'd also just point out that I find it interesting that he plays the 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 the, the kind of daddy issues and the. The mummy, like who was kind of a father for the figure to Marshall, because that just that makes me think of Jumanji, where uh, the, the the dad of Alan plays the dad and Van Pelt. Yeah, so that's that's actually what I was gonna say is um, uh, where is it here under wraps? Looking up the um, trivia. It's it's totally appropriate that he plays both characters because. Obviously, um, you know, they're both a, a stand in for um, the real, they're both a father figure. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's just, it's a, it, that's a cute little nugget um, to know that he played both of them. So on IMDb, it just says Bill Fogerbach uh, as Harold. So I don't know. It doesn't specify if it's like just the voice or. Um, yeah, the the trivia is not much help. It says Bill Fogerbach, he has two roles in the TV film. He performs as Marshall's stepfather, well, his boyfriend, Ted, and subsequently as Harold the Mummy. Yeah, so yeah, so he, he probably is that. He probably is both the, the body and the voice. I feel like, yeah, like I, feel like, I feel like that's him under wraps. <laughs> Such a bad pun. Probably, no, oh. probably. Yeah. Now, what, what what did you think about the, the good make- good pun? Did you like the makeup? Uh, it was fine. It was like pretty pretty standard. Yeah, pretty standard mummy. Pretty, pretty pretty standard, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I thought it was I thought it was a fun performance, and I think it is. I think it is interesting knowing that that's Patrick Star, before Patrick Star was a thing. Yeah, well, and and it also like it sort of validates in a way the feelings that I had about Harold um, that oh, yeah. I basically thought that he was well done and you know played the comedy very well um, and so you know it's, it was um, it wasn't just a fluke now we, um, know. now we know who it was yeah. yeah I knew the whole time but I just didn't let you know well that, that was uh, you know as a good secret to keep, actually. That was a nice little surprise. Nice little treat for the end. Now, yeah. this is the first DCOM team. I mean, we, we're, the, we're the DCOM team. We are. We are, the, we are the original DCOM team. We yeah. are. Wow. We are. Feels so good. Uh, but mm-hmm. this is the first DCOM, um, Disney Channel original movie. So, yeah. so this is the first DCOM, the first Disney Channel original movie. So, like, with all the ones that you've seen, do you do you think DCOMs have gotten better since the first one? Like, do you think that this one had any sense of identity with the first go around at it? Um, you know, DCOMs really have evolved. Um, my my benchmark, as you know, my sort of comparison point is always High School Musical. Um, and when I think about when I think about some of these old ones that I have enjoyed, um, you know, this this is a good example uh, under wraps. I really loved this one. Um, it's just such a different movie than High School Musical is. Oh, um, yeah. it's it's just so it's just so different. And all of these early ones do feel very similar. They just feel like 
a little cornier, a little low budgeter, um, lots of kind of, you know, sprinkled in bad acting and flat deliveries and uh, weak characters. And, you know, High School Musical was like, they put a lot of time and, and effort and, and money into that one, you know, and um, I, I, I think, I think it's interesting though, that if this is the first one and I really enjoyed it, um, there were some real clunkers in between this one and High School Musical. And, <laughs> and so, to, to, uh, yeah, Luck of the Irish, I really did not care for it. Don't Look Under the Bed. I, I had a hard time with that one. No, um, I, I forget what we talked about for that one, because I know I have it in the vault to post for Halloween. Yeah, for that, oh, yeah, that's, yeah, we haven't posted that one yet. Hey, so, um, but it's, it's, it's hard to answer the question, have they gotten better? Because it, it was a strong start okay um, you know and then it kind of there's it floundered a bit maybe and um yeah so i don't i don't i don't know i don't know if um maybe that's one to reflect on once the our decom team has run its course and we've watched yeah. all the ones we can get our hands on i i actually think that i probably I think I need to see more recent ones. I, yeah, and I, I feel like it's such a loaded question that I don't even know how I would answer it. Well, yeah, it, it's, I guess I, I haven't seen enough. I guess that's the short answer is that like, I haven't seen enough to know um, for sure. There, there may have been periods that were good, periods that were bad, or it may be that you can only really rate each movie yeah. as an individual movie instead of comparing them i think it would be interesting to even just watch the halloween ones and then kind of come up with a thought if the identity of them has changed at all yeah th that would be yeah actually that's a great idea definitely like doing the halloween ones um then sort of compare them all Thank you for listening to the DCOM team. Thank you for listening to us uh, unpack and unwrap everything about under wraps. Uh, the, <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank uh, you for watching. Yeah, I, I, we haven't, yeah, we, uh, uh, I feel like we haven't pushed that pun enough. Oh, I think, no. I think, I think we were like, I, we were very um, subdued when it came to those opportunities. Okay. I think I'll have to go into the edit and just kind of like do the subliminal, subliminal messaging and just kind of just mm -hmm. whisper over it like under wraps. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like that. I like that okay. idea. Cool. I will yeah. stop it here. So thank you everyone for watching, listening, having fun with right us. On. Sorry if that was a bit of a rush to end there. It was getting late, so we're still kind of working on the openings. We're kind of still working on the closings, how to close those out quickly and efficiently. But we either way, we appreciate you taking the time to watch, listen, uh, hopefully share our podcast, The Decom Team, where we revisit Disney Channel original movies, uh, as you've just listened to for the past like 80 minutes. So hopefully you stayed around for the whole thing. I think there's some really good moments in there. But either way, we really appreciate you watching and we hope you have a safe and happy Halloween and keep an eye on this channel for more podcasts this week and a couple throughout the rest of the year.